Hello reality artists, this is Paolo and today we are going to talk about lighting and specifically how to control light and how to nail your mesh light position every time easily. I'm going to show you this both in Dazz Studio and in Poser. So both camps can watch this video and be happy. So let's start with studio. I'll repeat the same thing in Poser in a second. The issue here is very simple. How can we control the light, both in terms of position and quality of the light? So let's first take a look at this scene and um, see the challenges that we have. Basically, this scene is showing a potential subject. I kept the scene simple so that there are no distractions. We are going to focus directly on the light. So the subject is our cube here. We have a back wall. We have a floor. Great. Our mesh light is here. Now, if I call reality and uh, if I do a quick render here, we will see immediately an issue with the light. And specifically, if we go back to studio, there you go. Um, if we go back to studio, we see where the light is. And so basically in this entire, entire area is affected by the light. That's not necessarily what I want. When we are talking about light control, we don't just mean where the light is and how big it is. We are talking about channeling the light the way we want. So let's take a look at the result here. So obviously the light is here and all this part of the environment is lit. Now this might be what I want to do or might be just something that I want to avoid because maybe there are other lights that are going to light this part of the environment and I don't want them to overlap. I don't want to overlight a, a, a portion of the environment. I want to be able to control the light. And everything we need for controlling the light is built in the mesh light provided with reality. You don't have to add anything. You don't have to buy any other product. Everything is built in in the light that is provided with reality. So let me close Lux for a second. I think I actually have a second. Yeah, I have a second copy here. Oh, let's close this one too. So how can we control the light? It's very simple. What I want to do is to light the subject without spilling the light on the, on the rest of the environment. And what I can do to, do to achieve that is to select the light and in my parameters tab in Studio, and the same thing if I look in Poser, I can select the light and here in the Mesh Light parameters, I can look for this control here, the snoot length. So if I go and I extend the snoot and I do it in studio as well. So here I'm looking for the morphs. I have the light selected, snoot length. And here the snoot extends, of course, because the ex snoot is extending. And let me switch to the perspective view so we can see exactly what that, what's happening here. So here is the snoot. You see it's a, it's a box. Now, because the snoot is black, everything is black, it's very hard to, to see exactly what we are looking at. So I'm going to switch to the wireframe mode and now it's easier to see what's happening. I'm going to adjust this. Okay, so here is the snoot. As I extend the snoot, Obviously, the light will not go out of the snoot, so all this part of the environment will be preserved, will be um, untouched by the light. And now if I switch to my camera one again and I do a render here, we will see the difference. And now you see that the rest of the environment is not touched at all. 
So this is exactly what I wanted to achieve. Let's try to see what's happening in, uh, in Poser. So let's do the same thing in Poser. Let me reset the snoot length here. And if I look in Poser and run reality from here, Here it is, it was on the other screen, so I had to collect it. <laughs> <clears throat> so we render the scene without extending the snoot. And we will see a similar ex result that we had for with, po uh, with that studio. So the light is here, everything is spilling in the environment. Okay, so let's do the same thing here. Let's move the snoot, selecting the light, go to the mesh light parameters, and snoot length. You might have seen this before, but there is more. So keep watching because the best is coming next. So let's go back to reality for poser and render this frame, <clears throat> and we will see a similar result to what we have seen with Studio. Now, the light is much more focused there. Let me adjust here. There you go. Uh, shutter is definitely uh, there you go that's the the right exposure now the result is much more controlled but there is one thing that um, is not right so let me just go back to studio in this case so going back to the frame render there we see that the light is controlled, but a portion of our subject is in the dark. The light is not positioned correctly. So now I could do some uh, adjustments, some other renders, some adjustments, some renders, uh, and so on. I don't want to do that. It's counterproductive. And it's mo more than that, it's actually boring. It doesn't do anything for my personal gratification. And art is all about us feeling better, isn't it? Well, maybe not, but it is one part of it. So um, I don't want to keep trying these things just to position one light. Can you imagine if I have to do this for five lights, it's going to be extremely boring. So wh what I'm going to do here is I want to find a way of positioning that light so that it will be centered on the subject and I have perfect good light on that cube. How can I achieve that without guessing? And I know some people say, well, you could parent the camera to the light. Ah, we don't need all that stuff. We don't need to do any of, any of that. Everything is built into the mesh light. Let me show you. So here we go to Lux, we close it. Now, keep in, take a, a mental picture of this picture, okay? This side of the box is completely in the dark and portion of the box is already in the dark. Actually, you know what we can do? We can switch to another camera. Let me go here. We are gonna switch to camera two. Here, this camera two has basically a close-up of the subject and do a quick render to see exactly what we can see up close. And here we can see more clearly the effect of the position of the, uh, of the light not being right. Now there is not just this side being completely dark. Of course, we can estimate the settings and get a little more light out of this picture. But even, you know, increasing the exposure, um, we really see that this part is dark, but also this side of the box is not lit evenly. So what can we do? Well, what I want to do is to have the light firmly in the center of the face. So let's close Lux and go to 
there's a studio and uh, we are gonna switch to that camera one and use another trick so if i select my light here you now light mesh light is selected you might have noticed that the mesh light actually has a little handle here now the handle is not there for figure you know to make things uh, uh, look better it actually has a role so if i have the light selected and i look at the morphs i have a handle length parameter so I'm going to just extend it, make it longer, 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 again, 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 and continue. Oh, oh, see what happens? The handle actually goes past the light. So basically, the handle is your laser pointer here. And we can easily see that, in fact, the center of the light is not falling on the center of the face of the subject. Let's change the perspective here, and we see clearly what's happening here. Well, that's not what I want, you know? I want to keep the light in the same position. I just want to rotate it so that it, it's more centered. And that's very easy to do with our universal tool. We're going to just move the light here. And now we have the handle centered on the face. Maybe I can even tilt it up a little bit there you go that is how you position the mesh light every time with accuracy with no guesswork and don't worry about the handle because it is not rendered if you keep things in the default settings you know more specifically if we go to reality we go to the materials tab here is our mesh light by default, you will see that the handle is hidden. You can make it visible if you want, but I don't see any reason for that to happen. But, you know, if you keep everything as it is, then you don't have to worry about the handle. You can leave it in place and it will work just fine. We can switch to our camera too. See the handle here. So let's go to reality, render this scene now, and we will see the difference. Now you see that the face of the cube is evenly lit. We can actually see part of the side correctly. The light is controlled, so it doesn't spill over the, the rest of the environment. We have achieved perfect lighting at one try. Let's try to do the same in Poser. Go to Poser here. And here I have my uh, posing camera, which is the same shot. And if I go to the auxiliary camera, I can look at my box and my mesh light here. And um, in the parameters tab let me move this like this and i can actually switch to wireframe and so i'll go to the handle length control it's exactly the same control we had in studio and as i extend it you see that it extends now let me switch to the other wireframe mode and if we look at our position here we see in effect that we have the same problem here the mesh light if we were looking at this without the handle being extended it looked like the mesh light was pointed right but with the handle extended now we see exactly where the light is pointing so now we do the same thing we select this light and we position it so that the handle hits the face in the right point and uh, we tilt it down a little bit. Perfect. So now I'm going to switch to the posing camera. And again, we see the handle being positioned right. 
maybe it's a little too much to the right. I can just oh, too much like this. And let's render this scene and see how it looks. Render frame. And again, we have perfect lighting at the first try. The light doesn't spill over the rest of the environment. See here. And the face is lit correctly. You see that both scenes are almost the same, but are slightly different. So they are not completely identical. But it doesn't matter because with this system, you can achieve perfect lighting every time. So use the handle as your laser pointer, use the snoot to avoid spilling light. And with these two tricks, you can do amazing, precise, realistic lighting in reality. I hope this was helpful. I'll see you next time. By the way, we have pages on Facebook, Google+, Twitter. Please go to Facebook, Google+, Twitter, whatever you like, and uh, like us, connect to us, let us know how we're doing. And if you have bought reality through uh, Renderosity, please leave your review there. You, you can help us greatly if you share how much you liked reality. Hopefully you liked it. And uh, share your review and um, help other people know what you can do with reality. Again, my name is Paolo Ciccone. I hope this was helpful. I'll see you next time.